last we all gathered here on uh, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden, you all had made your way to a mysterious island far north. Traveling with Veli and Harpel, you had learned from uh, one of the other members of the Arcane Brotherhood, Thalishgant, that the method to break into the glacier under which you had uncovered was an ancient city of Netherese origin named Yithrin that contained magical artifacts of tremendous power, apparently, um, was to uh, crack open the rigged glacier itself, and that Valish told you that the ability to do that was locked away in the sacred texts of the worshippers of the goddess of Winter's Fury, or real herself, at the palace that her druidic worshippers had built for her in the far icy north on an island uh, that few knew the existence of or the whereabouts of, but Valish had uncovered its location in his studies of the far north before, before in his attempts to overthrow the uh, council of speakers of the ten towns and establish himself as the tyrant of this era, of this entire region, he was locked away in Rebel's End. In exchange for the dark bargain of breaking him out that you double-crossed him on, he revealed to you the secrets of this island and the very text itself known as the Codiceal of White. Uh, Valian, anxious to uh, crack open the glacier and obtain the magical items held within the city, traveled with you with uh, a captain of the for uh, a cap a sea captain uh, that had been delivering goods to uh, rebels in uh, to supply the far northern prison, claiming to not know the location of this island that Valish spoke of, but knowing someone who may an ancient creature a whale that had been awakened by druids hundreds of years ago, perhaps the very druids that worship the Frost Maiden herself, Ongajuk, uh, who took you on an undersea tour in a bubble strapped to the whale's back, traveling past ruins of frost giant kingdoms and uh, our storm giant palaces buried beneath the sea, eventually arriving, arriving at the shores of this frosted over island multiple shipwrecks surrounding the island, littering the area with uh, the remains of those who had tried to uh, make landfall here before you. Exploring two of the shipwrecks, you found uh, both riches and woe, uh, gold and treasure, and the skeleton of a frost giant nearly brought about the end of uh, some of you that uh, had still life in its creaking ancient bones. Another one of the skeletons contained a coven of sea hags. Or I'm sorry, another one of the ships, uh, skeletonized ships, contained a coven of sea hags that had uh, multiple various treasures, managing to escape from the hags without having to do much combat with them. Uh, breaking away with your very lives, you managed to sneak away. A uh, little worse for the wear. Climbing up onto the uh, frosted over island, you... Uh, found strange things. The, uh, a dock built clearly for frost gi for giant sized frost giants, presumably, uh, and everything greatly oversized ahead of you. Uh, climbing a giant stair up to the uh, top surface of the island, you found a barren area with mountains rising in the center of it, rising all the way up to an edifice in the shape of a skull crowned with thorns. Uh, that the that a stone path or an ice path led upwards to an evil ice mephit sat at the top uh, and you chose to ignore him and his uh, display of riches in the ships uh, crashed on the shores of the island below um, making your way into the island surface you found beautifully carved perfect ice sculptures of uh, uh, various animals, bears, elks, uh, foxes, all sorts of uh, northern animals, even dangerous creatures such as rimarazes, wolves, uh, frozen in place, more perfect than any mortal hand could ever have uh, could ever have carved. Cadillac like granite guts realizing this, that these were sculptures beyond any human or a mortal hand decided to take uh, fire to the hoof of a deer 
and elk that had been frozen in place. Melting and cracking the ice, the foot fell off and crumbled. The skies turned black, and a terrible screech echoed through the icy depths of the island. A woman appearing before you, seven feet tall, towering over towering over you, Grenaguts, and really taller than most of you, with eyes as cold as ice, piercing blue skin, a pale blue and cold. She let out a terrible wail at you. Saying, listen, <laughs> saying, uh, defilers. And uh, as soon as she appeared, she was gone. And then in the distance, you heard a terrible, terrible roar. Proceeding forward along the icy trail towards the uh, edifice, the skull-shaped edifice in the center of the island, climbing the mountains, you find yourselves all suddenly surrounded by multiple yetis that have climbed out of the snow, seemingly drawn to your very presence, perhaps by the deity with which you have just anchored. Uh, that's where I will take you now onto the side of this barren mountain on this island made out of ice and snow surrounded by horrific monsters, including one greater than all of the rest. Everybody has leveled up, by the way. If anyone has not leveled themselves, please, please do so. And I will... Well, maybe not. <laughs> Technical difficulties with the sound. Thank you much. So what level are um, we now? Level eight. Level eight, okay. Teen. Uh, um, Jeff, when I hear the growl, um, <clears throat> yes. can, I, can I pull a Geralt and, and just pop the, the cork on a potion of greater healing? Um, yeah, for sure. The moment you hear the growl, you uh, you also gain some HP from uh, leveling up. So... You all are surrounded by a yeti. They burst out of the uh, ice and snow, surrounding you, coming down from the uh, coming down from the hills. Everybody, go ahead and roll initiative. Getty initiatives for just a minute. I was adjusting the den of the music. Still might be a little bit loud. I hope you guys have a good plan. Kill everything. That's a plan. Kill it with fire. I um I agree my Honestly, plan pelt. My plan was to let Ordella kill everything. That was a hundred percent I think the strategy. 
Well, your wizard should probably have some pretty bad, badass spells at this point, so... Oh, fireball. Wizard, wizard running away. Yeah, it is time for Fireball. Yes, this is your moment. <laughs> this, is your, this is... I vote we all head south. I was going to say, you know that spell that you didn't use right that time? Yeah. Now's I the time. Fireball. It is your time to shine. Yes. Time is coming. There are seven regular-sized Yeti and one colossal-sized Yeti. Kill that with the fire first. It's just on top of all of you. I've not rolled a lot of Valian, uh, but I think Valian's going to roll an initiative here because she's in just as much dire straits as you guys are here. She didn't go climbing into the boats and stuff, but she's in this one, so she gets her own initiative roll. It's not a good one. Are, are we sure she does? Harkus, you're up first. You've never seen this many pelts. Okay. And I am really excited about it. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, so I'm going to... I'm going to take the fight to this guy down here and see if I can just keep him isolated. Okay. And I'm going to staff him a couple of times. That's what I do. Okay, that's a hit. And then I get 2d6. That was ridiculous. And then I'm going to stab him again. I get 2d6. And then I'm going to flurry of blows. The 16 a hit? Uh, they all hit. Uh, the 19 hits and the 16 hits. Okay, so... So we got a 10 and a 7? That is... So 16, 26, 36, 43 damage. Wow. 43 damage. Okay, let me make sure I get that right. Uh, doesn't kill it. But it looks real bad, Arcus. You beat the ever-loving snot out of it. It's got like eight hit points, or something. Which it's still you... real dangerous. Which it's one it's was that? the one down here, and in fact, it is that one's turn, oh. Arcus. Uh oh. So, uh, Arcus, make me a Constitution saving throw, please. That's a pass. Uh, it's going to try to claw you. Arcus is pissed off and wants a pelt. I I take it both of those are misses. They are. Ordella, you're up. Okay. Uh, give me just one second. Okay. I am going to... Uh... Sorry, Harkus. I'm going to put cast Tasha's Caustic Brew on the big Yeti and ruin his pelt. I apologize. Maybe, hopefully. Did I, did I do it? Oh. And it says... Uh, so which dex, one are you? Yeah. Which one are you going after, Odell? I'm sorry. The big one. All right, the big mm -hmm. one. He's gonna make a dex save. Mm -hmm. It's not very dexterous. Uh, That's what I'm gonna... hoping. <laughs> he's gonna fail that. Okay, good. I mean, it's only four, and then I'm gonna get my um, fancy longsword out. Okay. 
But he's got acid on him now, right? Yes. Yeah, so and it says uh, he takes 2d4 acid damage at the start of each turn. Oh, it says him. I mean, I have this in here, right? Because it said... Uh, Until it gets the acid off, right? Yeah. yeah. If you use a spell slot of second level or higher, it increases by 2d4 for each slot level above first. Ooh, I need to manage that then. Yeah. Uh, what out. level are you casting this at? It says first level. I don't know how to okay. then change you, that. If, if I don't know how you, what level you cast at with your character right now, I'll have to help you with that. It's, but, uh... Yeah, it's on first level, so... Okay. Uh, then he's marked with acid. I'm just going to put a little... Uh... So until he gets the acid off, I think he has to continue to take that damage. This, that's Tasha's Caustic Brew. Yeah. What's it? Is he has to spend his turn getting the acid off? I'm oh, sorry. Spells, each creature in line must make a deck save or be covered in acid with spells duration or until the creature uses its action to wipe or wash the acid off. So he basically has to burn his action to get the acid off of it. Mm. Okay. Uh, this one is up. What's he going to do? Uh, he's got a movement of 40 feet. So that means he can go 5, 10, 15. He gets over to like here and he's going to stare his uh, Yeti eyes at Mordella and Cadillac. You're both within 30 feet of him. And Valiant, too. So, all of you make a con save, please. Valiant is good. Cadillac is good. Ordella is good. Okay. The question is... All right, so you're immune to that effect from here on. That's good. For those of you that passed, you're immune to the effect. Okay. Okay, this Yeti is up. Uh, you're immune to the effect. He's just going to charge up and try to claw at you, Cadillac. Twice. Boo. It's going really slow, I don't know. Did it four times because just the first two, 12 and 14. Uh, neither hit. Uh, this one's up, and where can he get to? Yeah, he can get to Liam He's going to go up and he's going to make Leonard make the same con save. Leonard, Constitution saving throw. And Yatara, Constitution 7 throw. All right. Leonardo. Leonardo and Yataro. Yatara, you are paralyzed with fear. Leonard, you are okay, and you are... Um, immune to fear. You're immune to fear. From that specific fear, I guess, probably other fears. Fine. There's always more. Uh, Leonard, he's then going to uh, claw at you twice. Nine and seven. Man, bad Yeti rolling. Miss, miss. Uh, the next one's up. Uh, so, Yatari, you're paralyzed. That's kind of bad for you. Oh, what's this one going to do? This one, I think, is just going to dash forward. He can't get anywhere. He's going to dash up and dashes up on Ordella. Oh, it's the biggins' turn. The target's who? All right, hang on.
All right. Yeah. The big one steps forward in front of Valian, Zarya, Ordella, and Cadillac. And he unleashes a 30-foot cone of frigid air that I think yeah, is going to catch all of you. So Ordella, Valian, Zarya, and Cadillac make Can you get me... the acid off? No, he's not going to the acid off, so he's okay. going to take that acid damage. Okay. Roll your 2d4. 2d4. It's burning just... him. He's mad. Okay. It's just 2d4 damage. Okay. So he takes 4 damage. And he Great. continues to take awesome. that every turn. Uh, but now you need to make me a uh, constitution saving throw, please. And Valian is there. Mine is a 16, by the way. Okay. Uh, all of you fail, except Valian. Uh, you're all going to take... Hang on, i get my calculator out. Uh, 39 points of cold damage. Ah. So I am resistant to cold damage. You take half of that. Okay, and may I also take a reaction to do Stone's yes. Endurance? Yes. Okay. And reduce that by an additional seven. So what was the total? So that's going to be 18 minus seven. That'll give you 11. Perfect. You take 11. Ouch. Uh, Zarya, you're up. Okay. Um, first and foremost, I want to move. Um, farther away from this thing. Um, so somewhere out here, probably somewhere in there. Um, and then, um, Ordella and um, Cadillac, how bad are you as far as health points? I'm at 45. Um, all right, I think I'm going to uh, use one of my new abilities from the level up. Um, I took Meta Magic Adept, so I'd like to use a sorcery point, and I'd like to twin spell uh, Guiding Bolt. Okay. Um, and I'd like to target the one that's in front of Ordella that she's attacking and the one that's uh, in front of Cadillac. Hopefully, give them advantage on their next hit a roll. So we'll say this one's for the one that's attacking Ordella. Okay. And then this one is the one that's attacking. Oh. Ooh. Okay. All right. Uh, so the one for Ordella takes 18 damage. Okay. And then the one for Cadillac. Oof. Takes 30. Both uh, the next attack that's made against either of those two Yeti, you have advantage when you attempt to attack with that. Nice. So, whoever the next person is that attacks, attacks either one that of those. Yeti. Yeah, either of those two. So, I need to mark them somehow. Uh, we'll just put a red dot on these two. 
Um, and I think that's the end of my turn. Okay. All right. Thank you, Zarya. Indeed. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Cadillac, you're up. Okay. Um, I am going to deftly scoot around to the other side of my uh, Yeti friend here. And did we decide that branding smite could be used with sunbeam because it says with the weapon attack but it does not designate a melee attack uh S sunbeam is a spell attack okay so you can't you you cannot uh combine uh smite with a like a spell okay it has to be a weapon attack basically like a melee attack okay in fact in fact smites in general uh in the D, &D rules are not even allowed to be ranged weapons. They have to technically be melee weapons. Okay. Um, then I will go ahead and fire up Sunbeam. Okay. And I'm looking right quick to see if I have any ap applicable bonus actions here that could be beneficial. But um, I don't believe so. So that's just what we're going to do. And this will go in a straight line, so it should hit both of these guys. Okay, so you're going after the two yetis. Correct. There, and they make con saves one and two. They both fail that. And they're going to take 26 radiant damage. And that kills, that kills the one nearest to you. You took a yeti out. Okay. Um, And for my second attack... Um, I should have enough movement to go ahead and go up here to the one next to Ordella, and then and then boop him on the nose with uh, Dust Crusher. Okay. You have advantage if you want to shoot fish for a crit. It okay. doesn't really matter because that blows that guy away. <laughs> Do I want him super dead or super duper duper dead? He's very dead. He's very, very dead. Let's see. I moved. Let's see. One. Okay. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Okay. I was going to try to get some distance between me and uh, Frozen Godzilla up there, but unfortunately, I think I'm just where I'm at. <laughs> um, actually, I'm going to be I'm going to be a coward and as a bonus action. Oh, uh, Ordella, what is your um, what is your health at? Oh, no, we don't have an Ordella. Um, Jeff, can you see what Ordella's health is at? Uh, no, I cannot. I don't have D and D Beyond open. Um, it okay. can't be good. It cannot be. I can say this. It cannot be good because I think she took the brunt of that uh, cone of cold, basically the abominable Yeti uh, cast. Um, okay, so um, I am going to go ahead as a bonus action. And um, uh, be a big damn hero instead of a big damn coward, which was my first instinct. And I'm going to cast Sanctuary on Ordella, which will um, keep her away from the next attack. Okay. It'll, of course, slough off when she goes to make her attack, but it'll, it'll keep her safe for one round. So she gets Sanctuary, so uh, I'm looking for like a halo or something to put on her. I'll just put this little, like, hard lighting tool. There we go. Okay. Anything else? That's it. Okay. Leonard, you're up. All right. Leonard. 
Leonard is going to uh, summon my drone. Take you off. And then with my drone, my flamethrower drone. Okay. I'm working on it. There it is. 10 damage against a DC 14 deck stack. Where you can put it wherever you want it. It just pops out there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's attacking this guy. Attacking this guy from there. So he needs a DC 14 dexterity save. Okay, the Yeti, uh, DC. the Colossal Yeti. Or the big Yeti, I'm sorry. The Abominable Yeti. Uh, he rolls a two? It's rolling that one quietly. Okay, he's he's going to take ten fire damage. Ten fire, okay. Well, that's good, because that helps you. Uh, he lets out a scream. Good. Okay, is that it? Um, let me see. Yeah, I have nothing that is a bonus action. So, uh, I do have, just as a reminder, so that people can remember to remind me, I have an ability called Flash of Genius, when I or another creature I can see within 30 feet makes an ability check or saving throw, I can use my reaction to add plus three to the roll. Okay. Uh, Which would have been great for the paralyzed effect against. Yeah, that would have, that would have been Sarah, great maybe. yesterday. Right. <laughs> Good. I'm taking a nap. <laughs> Um, okay. So this guy I'm on a mark is having had fire, so uh, he lets out a whale with fire, and um, it, yeah, seems to affect him badly. Alright, it is uh, this Yeti's turn nearest your flamethrower. And, um... I think it runs up and tries to bash your flamethrower into the ground. Does the 25 hit the flamethrower? Oh, the 25 is going to hit. Okay, that does... Uh... Oh, shoot. Uh, uh, seven slashing and three cold damage to it. All right. Okay, uh, Valian is up. And um, she uh, she whips out her uh, wand of magic missiles. And uh, this casts magic missile at uh, its first level. So not all that great. But she's got six charges on it. He's going to shoot it at the big one. And that's... Uh, magic Missile is what? It's uh, 1d4 plus 2 for each hit, I think. And you get 4 of them for first level. If I remember right. Or 3 of them. 3 of them. Okay. I'm doing math here. That is 3d4 plus... Uh, Correct me if I'm wrong. If I'm doing this wrong. Magic missile. Magic missile is one d four plus one. Yes. And at first level, you get three of them. Correct. All right. So she blasts the abominable, the abominable yeti for nine with three magic missiles. Harkus, back up to you. All right. Um, I'm gonna staff him again. He 
Uh, dead. That hits. Uh, he is dead. Okay. Um, then I'm going to move over to this one. Stab him. Okay. That hits. That's seven. So 14, because I get the 2d6. Yeah. And then I'm going to... Um, so then I have... Let me see. Um, so I have where'd that go? Um, so I have the ability, so I have stunning strike. So when I hit him with a melee attack. I can spend a key point to make the target stunned until the end of my next turn if it fails a con save. So if I do stunning strike, does that take my bonus action or is that just... Uh, stunning strike is a key point that you spend. Um, so I can spend a key point on that and a key point on flurry of blows? I don't think so. I think you have to choose. Okay, then I'll just flurry of blows in. Um... Let me let me make sure that I'm got that right, okay? Um, okay. I don't want to. I don't want to like tell you wrong here. I want to do it right. Um, for crying out loud, roll twenty. Your compendium is just the worst. Sorry, roll twenty. We love you, sponsor us, please. Yeah. Um. Last features rules. Here we go. Stunning strike. I want to make sure. Um, starting at fifth level, the Indy Beyond so much better for this. Keys. Like missiles on our movement evasion stunning strike. Okay, starting at fifth level, you can interfere with the key flow of a point. When you hit another creature with a melee attack, you can spend one key point to attempt a stunning strike. Okay, so it is just um... no, you can do it. I think I can, you can flurry. Yeah, I I yeah can you can, it, it doesn't say uses your bonus action or anything. Um, okay, when you so, hit, you have to hit first, and then so you I can hit spend him a key already. point. Okay, so, so he needs to make a con the... save against your monk save DC. Yes, yeah, so it's a... What does this say? That's going to be a fail, I'm sure. Is it... Yeah, it's a DC 13. Okay, so he fails. So he's stunned. So then, so then my flurry of blows gets... Advantage then? Yep. Hits. Hits. Doesn't. Yep. As you smack him real hard for 18. How does that one look? After uh, bad. Okay. Still alive, but bad. Okay. Leave that, leave that other one. I'm coming back for that pelt. I'm just chalking up pelts right now. Okay. Uh, Ordella, you're up. Um, Ordella, right quick, uh, just to let you know, during my turn, um, I cast Sanctuary on you to give you some options here. Honestly, I thought that Mega Yeti 2000 was going to get a turn before you. <laughs> So I'm not sure how much good it does you, because when you attack, it wears off, of course. But uh, you have some options here um, if you choose to use them. What does Sanctuary do? Um, it basically wards you against attack. Um, but if I attack, it goes away? Uh, correct. So um, there you go. Okay, 
Or the other, what are you doing? Well, poopies. All right, so is that what this little heart thing is on me? Yes, that's sanctuary. Okay. I was wondering, I was like, I, I came back to something. Yeah, he cast sanctuary on, on you. Well, poopies. And of course, I got like three yetis on here right behind me on the tracker board. Uh, let's see. So you could just sit back and drink some hot cocoa is, is what I'm saying. <laughs> well, then I can I just like hold it my goes turn? away when you it goes away when you attack, but uh, you're it, I think it protects you for now, but it's up to you. Can I hold my turn? Uh, you can hold your action. Sure. OK, until until what? What are you going to hold your action until? Uh... You can say until after someone else goes, or you can say until something happens, like the Yeti attacks somebody close to me, or you could just say, I don't want to do anything this turn. I'm going to sit here protected. I think I'm going to sit here protected. I In which case, that. that's not holding your turn, which you're doing. <laughs> uh, you can take the hide action. You can take the evade. Okay. The... Well, Gene, uh, how do these Yeti, this Yeti, how's this Yeti next to me look? Uh, pretty healthy. Of course he does. Pretty bad. Pretty good. Like, really dangerous. Like a big Yeti monster that's like eight foot tall snow monster that's going to eat you. That's great. Well, if he's eight feet tall, how big is this giant Yeti? Like 20? Forever tall. Forever. Okay. Well, I think I'm just going to sit back and be protected for a minute. Just one round. Okay. Alright. Uh, the farthest Yeti up is is up and it's gonna rush down and it's going to try to claw at Bailey and Harpel. Finally something hits a person. And it's not rolling the damage for some reason, which I don't really understand. Um, she takes 20 damage. Okay. Other Giddy is up. Cadillac, it's going to come after you. 15 and 16? They both miss. Very lucky. Indeed. Uh, and then this one is stunned right now, and uh, stunning strike lasts until um, the end of your next turn. So it is stunned until the end of Harkus's turn. So it doesn't get to uh, take an action here. But the big one is up, and um, I need to make a quick roll here, and this is an important roll. Okay. Um, the big one is going to... It can't claw at Ordella, can it? This is a sanctuary. Sanctuary... It can, but I think it has to do a wisdom saver. Uh, read to me what sanctuary... Or let me pull it up. Um, it's it's any all good thing. Yeah, any creature who targets uh, the warded creature with an attack or harmful spell must make a wisdom saving throw. Or what happens? On a failed save, uh, the creature must choose a new target or lose the attack. Okay, so basically it runs to attack Ordella, and then it's going to make a wisdom save. And then it's if it fails, it's going to attack something else. Correct. So it would know that you're sanctuized, but then it rolls and it fails. So it runs up to your Delalog to attack, and then it just stops in its tracks. And it turns. And uh, it claws Cadillac. Damn it. I knew that was coming. <laughs> Bummer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, does a 17 hit you, Cadillac? Yeah, it does. Okay. Um... You take 14 slashing well, and 7 so cold. That's a little bit worse. 14 slashing and 7 cold damage. Zarya, you're up. 
All right. Um. Ordella, how bad are you? I have 21 hit points. Okay. Um, how bad is Velian? Uh, Velian is, uh, she's okay. She's, uh, 47 of 67. Okay. Um. You guys have done great with this fight, despite, like, you all passed your, 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 like, not getting, like, frozen rolls, except one. Uh, I don't, so, Guitar, I don't have you in the initiative. What did you roll? And an 11. I don't know why you're not in there, but it's fine because you were frozen anyway. But uh, you're about, you should have been up after the abominable Yeti, so go ahead and make that saving throw again. It was a pawn save, right? Yeah, you do it at the end of your turn against the chilling gaze. It was a. Yes, yeah, a con save. Yeah, oh, you've it... still failed it. You're still paralyzed. <laughs> Sorry, dude. <laughs> at least nothing has attacked you yet. Uh, flashing back to Zarya. I'm sorry, Zarya. You're good. Um, I was debating what I was going to do, but I think that just solidifies things. Um, can I cast Bless? And the people that need it most are going to be Yatara, probably Ordella, and probably Cadillac right now. So can I cast Bless? You all have a D4 to your attack rolls, as well as your saving throws. Yay. Wow. Um, that is concentration, and I'm once again moving farther the fuck away from all yeah. of it. Uh, not much, but enough. Um, okay, that'll do. Uh, and I am, that is, that is my turn. Okay. Cadillac, you're up. Um, okay. How literally uh, am I allowed to interpret the zone of influence here of these two creatures um, in front of me? Uh, they're, both in melee they're, with, they're both in melee with you. Well, since they're both overlapping, they uh, occupy the same five-foot block um, right uh, in no. front of me. No. Yeah, yeah, they do, yeah. They're like no. right next to each other. No. Yeah. It's just yeah. a oh, 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 wow. Oh, That's okay. I'm, t I'm okay. I'm taking this back to the people's court of D&D. &D. Mm. All right. All right. All right. Judge All right. Judy, make, your case. You? make your Make your case. What are you trying to do? I'm okay. So uh, you can't the attack two. You cannot target two things it, it, like with a melee attack at once. Um. How, okay, this sounds like not another D&D podcast has a supreme crit to rule <laughs> on this issue. We might need to submit it. If if you have an area of effect thing, then you can hit both of them. But you're not going to be able to target two things with like a melee attack. Uh, you no, still no, have the no, sunbeam no. effect. A, a beam of sunshine, which, okay, which you can, spells yeah, out I'll, that I'll, it I'll, does a five foot area of effect straight ahead. I'll, I'll allow that since it's a five since it's an area of effect spell. I'll allow that. Sweet. Okay, so then that's what I'm going to do. Um, I am going to cast uh, Sunbeam at um, at Baby Yeti and the uh, Abdominal Yeti. Nah. Oh, Ordella, be sure to roll your acid damage for the Abominable oh. Yeti. Okay. And uh, I get a plus D4 on that, right? Or do I need it? It's not an uh, attack roll or a saving throw, so no, you do not. Uh, for the giant the, yeti. Uh, small yeti passes with a 22 and uh, the abominable yeti abdominal yeti mm. <laughs> the abominable yeti he he rolls a 9 so he fails Sunday so does the pass take half damage correct 25 for that and he's blinded right correct so that was that was big guy. Yeah, that's really good. Okay, um, and then I, I guess I gotta find something. I gotta find something for blinded. Uh, maybe that marker, and then this guy takes half of twenty-five. So like, I don't know, twelve. Uh, how are these two guys looking? 
Uh, pretty good. The big one looks angry and blind. Okay, so um, for my second attack, then I am going to use Dust Crusher, and I'm going to expend another spell slot to cast um, another uh, Branding Smite. And so um, there is that. And this is an attack roll. Yes, uh, if you're smacking with Dust Crusher. Um, you know, here's a question. Uh, you have the spell active. Yes. Uh, you don't get a second attack, though, buddy. You don't get to. You don't get to count a spell attack as like, like when you have multi attack. Uh -huh. That's like two melee attacks. You don't get two spells. Or a spell and, and a melee attack. You get to make multi-attack if you make two melee attacks. So, uh, you got to uh, use Sun... You got to use Sunbeam. Well, well... Uh, oh, uh, I, I gave the, you both of them, the, and even Laterno is nodding because he knows I'm right. Well, the... the the law of the conservation of mm -hmm. dice rolls yes, say dice here's, here's, here's that roll thing. that dice rolls. Mm -hmm. Here's how this goes. Here's, a, here's how this goes. So. Leonard, <laughs> this is how this changes. Leonard, what you doing? Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so Leonard has a two phase action. Phase yep. one. You have a flame. Yeah, I hope it's I hope it's not a melee and a spell, Leonard. Ah. <laughs> phase one Quick, is the flamethrower. Otherwise, it's otherwise, otherwise, I would just take a fighter and then multi-class into a wizard and be like, infinite spell slots, I get four attacks. That's an excellent idea. It don't work like that. Okay, note to four 10 damage. damage, these two need to make dex save. Okay. Dex save, well, dex save. Like, my previous they character, both fail. he was a dual wielder they and had two fail. attacks. And fire so. damage. That was so they four. both take 10 fire damage, and they get the fire marker on them. And then Leonard is aiming at the Colossal Yeti with the firebolt. Oh, that hits. That does 10 fire damage. Oh, wow, you just did 30 fire damage to various things. And it's also going to get the fire marker on it. Yeah, and Leonard also, just to remind everybody has a necklace of fireball that he can't use because everybody's right there. Everybody's like, stand really close to the Yetis. Stand That's the really best way to deal with fire that, that needs so, to soak fire damage. Quick question. Blinded creatures, don't you get advantage on those attacks? Uh, you do. Um, yeah. I guess you can crit fish that if you want to. Crit fish. Um... Sure. I'll fish for a crit on my firebolt. <laughs> no, I just wasted another excellent roll. So when I missed the next two. Ah, uh, well, you know, that's how it goes. It's Laterno's gonna... fault. I tried. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, all right, nothing, uh, and then it's Yeti's turn. Uh, this one is, uh, he's got 40 feet of movement. Can he get there? Oh yeah, heck yeah, he can. He runs up on Leonard. And he's going to try to slash at you, Leonard. That's a 25. He's probably going to work. He has disadvantage because he's uh, flame. So a 25 and a 17. Okay, those are both going to hit. At least he didn't crit. There's that. Okay, so it's not rolling the damage. So I'm going to have to put it into a dice roller. Uh, you're going to take... Um, it is seven slashing and three cold damage twice, so 14 slashing and six cold. That's the average. All right. Took it. That's 20 damage total. Uh, Valian is up. 
Man, what is she gonna do? She's got spells. Um. Hmm. She's right up on this thing. She reaches out and grabs the Yeti's fur that's next to her and says some horrific words, chanting necromantic uh, uh, energies and powers and uh, tests vampiric touch, which still doesn't roll. I don't know what's wrong with the roller on this thing. But it's going to do... This many damages. That's not bad. For NPC level damage, not bad. Arcus, back up to you. I swear to God, we're going to get to Yatara at some point. At least he's not had his head um, chewed okay. off yet. Uh, uh, how's, how's this one looking? That's right next to um, they're all okay. Uh, the one in front of you is pretty is the worst off because you smacked him around, Arcus. Finally missed. <laughs> okay, fourteen. Uh, hang on, just one second. You're hitting. Okay, yeah. Thirty-six damage. He was stunned, so you have advantage. Oh well, here let me. Nope, it didn't matter. Okay, what was the total? Thirty-six. You beat him to death with your fists. Mm. Come over here and punch some of the other ones. All right, so at this point, I'm going to... I'm just going to stand right here until my next turn to decide where I'm going to move after this. Okay. Then Ordella is up. All right. Did you give him those five whole points of acid damage that last time? I did. All right. But you, get to roll it, you get, but you get to roll it again. Starting my turn or his? At the end of your turn, basically. At the end or of at his, turn. I'm sorry, at his turn. If okay, he that's what I thought. Yeah. All right. Well, then I am going to let's see. And you still have sanctuary, I think, until you, something makes it not be you attack someone. Wasn't. Cadillac attacked. Uh, yeah, is that a concentration spell? Uh, sanctuary it... is one bonus action. No, it lasts for a minute. Uh, it lasts until uh, until the spell ends, uh, or uh, you attack something. Yeah, it's not concentration. Oh, okay. I was thinking it was concentration. So you still have it. Well. I if guess... the worded creature makes an attack, casts a spell, or deals damage, it ends. So you can stay protected, or relatively protected, as long as they pass, fail their wisdom save. Um, if you don't but, attack anything, but that's up to you. But you have a d4 to your attack rolls and advantage yeah. on this one. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and attack him. Uh, I'm going to use... Let's... I'm going to use Firebolt. Okay. And then... Uh, can you um, roll me the attack roll? That just rolled the, the damage. Oh, okay, sorry. Clicked the wrong thing. Okay. Um, you said she has advantage. That well, hits Because anyway. it's blinded, but yes. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It okay. is blind. Okay, let me do it again. Just in case. Ooh. Uh, not so a crit, but you still get... she's in melee with a ranged weapon, but... Yeah. Uh, no. I mean, that is that is a debatable... 
that's a debatable rule. Uh, we'll give you 15, the 15, uh, or 14 fire damage. Okay. And, and he is then, still taking fire. And then, uh, my dancing longsword. Yep. That's a hit. Six. Six. Yep. All right. Now I'm gonna uh, back away. Maybe. Uh, it's gonna make an opportunity attack against you. It's disadvantage, Ow. but it's gonna do it. Okay. Well, it's blind. It won't see me get away. Okay. It has disadvantage. Does an 18 hit? Well, of course it does, and that's gonna kill me if it does. Uh, it might not. Okay, well then... Hang on. We don't know. Come on now. You don't know what it's gonna... What mm. it's gonna be. But it does slash at you as you back away. Okay, uh, that, that does 14 slashing damage. And 7 cold damage. Alright. Are you dead? Yes. Really? Yes. Oh wait, I don't know. Can it make an attack? It's got sanctuary. It has to pass the wisdom save. I don't know how that works on reactions. That's yeah, I already made a, attack, I already though. made an attack. I no longer uh, have sanctuary. Ah, so sanctuary drop. Okay, yeah, you yes. attack. So sanctuary drop. That's right. Y'all are better than me. So your Ordella drops down unconscious as she tries to back away. You see her lifeless body fall down in the snow as the Yeti claws at her as she tried to escape its grasp. This one, full of fire and fury, claws at Valiant Harpel. How'd uh, I move back? With, hits with, because you didn't get away. Okay. As you were trying to get away, it clawed you to death. Oh, well. It does 10 damage to Valian, clawing at her. And this one is up. That is going to claw twice at Cadillac. It crits. No. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it does uh, 20 damage on the crit. And 10 damage on the uh, non-crit. So uh, that would be 30 total. Oh. Okay, so what was that first amount again? 20? 20 on the crit. Okay, and then 10 more? 10 more. So 30 total. All right. Um, I am in death save territory. Cadillac drops. Oh, dear. The abdominal yeti is up. <laughs> uh, he's going to take uh, your acid damage. Roll your uh, 2d4, Ordella. I mean, you're not dead. The acid is still burning him, so go ahead and roll it. Okay. Uh, what was it? 2d4? 2d4. 8. Woo, 8. Okay, no, that's good. That's max damage. Uh, what's he gonna do? Chew on my bones. No. They're gonna secure the battlefield, or try to. Okay, he slashes Valian for 21 damage. The, the abdominal yeti uh, smacks uh, Valian Harpel and she spins around and uh, nearly falls down on the snow, down on a knee, kind of... Uh, gasping for air as it's clawed at her twice. Yatara, you're up. Uh, Yatara, you're paralyzed. Roll me a con save, please, Yatara. Dear God, help us. What's the d4? No, 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 Hold no, on. no. Hold on. Oh, uh, d4 is not going to help. <laughs> not gonna do it is it it's not gonna do it 
a is nine, it a DC a nine, twelve? A nine is not gonna. A nine is not gonna do it. Uh, and this is how we all die. It is He's a got DC. another D three. It it is a DC thirteen. Mm, never mind. Zarya, you're up. Feeling inspired by this most recent level up, I will once again twin spell something. This time okay. I will be twin spelling healing word. Oh, that's a good for use my of precious spell. Ordella as well as Cat. Now Ordella, you shouldn't have dropped. Ordella, you should be at one hit point. Yeah, I was just thinking she, that I didn't use my relentless endurance. She's got whatever. relentless. She's got relentless endurance. So Ordella's actually at one HP as she tried okay, to go. Okay, so let me ask you this: Is uh, Velian out, or is no. she basically one? She's basically one hit point. Oh. Well, in that case, I don't need to twin spell anything. Um, fine. I will healing word Cadillac, bring him up as Thank my you. bonus action. You get eight points. For the record, okay. you're all still blessed, so you get uh, a d4 on saving throws, uh, which includes death saving throws, I believe. Um, yes. Action, toll the dead. Can I toll the dead on the big guy, please? Yes. Uh, sure. Wisdom saving throw 15, please. Okay. Uh, he rolls a 13. Uh, he fails. And he has taken damage. So that falls. Okay. He takes five damage. Um, but I think that is everything that I will be doing. Okay. So he takes five damage. And Cadillac, you're up somehow. Okay. Um, I am. Um, I'm in. I'm in a horrible place. It's not good. So um, I am just the be the best thing I can do. For the team is to attack. Um, I don't think it's going to do me any good to tank up. So, um, just spend a turn doing it. So, I am going to turn to Big Yeti, um, knowing full well I'm about to die, and I say a prayer to Sylvanus to give me strength for the little amount of time I am here on this plane. And then I am going to pull out Dust Crusher. And um, do I need to um, go ahead and uh, cast a Branding Smite first? Or can I do that after I find out if it hits? You can do it after. Okay. So um, first attack, Dust Crusher. That's most definitely going to hit. Okay. So then I'm going to go ahead and attack with branding smite and um i'm sorry uh, hold second on. attack i didn't mean branding smite i apologize um I, I retract that if i can okay yeah um let's see where was that that was a second level spell um i am going to do divine smite instead okay and so um, I'm still expending spell slots to do it, though. Yeah. So um, I'm going to expend. Let me see. Make sure I read this correctly. You can spend one spell slot to deal two d8 with an extra. It's one d8 for each spell level higher than first. Spell level. Okay. So I'm going to expend a second level slot for that, which will make it 3d8. Yep. Okay. Alright. Um, now, I'm going to go ahead and do the second attack. Yep. That hits. Oh, thank goodness. Uh, Cadillac. Describe to me what happens as you bring down the the abdominal yeti. Uh, the yeti standing right beside me skewers me through the gut. 
The abominable Yeti falls <laughs> as you, as your prayer to Sylvanas seemingly is answered as you uh, crush its spirit with uh, terrible smite and another cru crushing blow. Leonard, you're up now. All right. So the drone is going to move to y'all so that it can get both these guys. They're going to need to make two D uh, DC fourteen deck saves. Okay. Uh, let's see here. One pass, one fail. Six to one, three to the other. They still are fired. Fire damaged. They still are fired. And then Leonard is going to cast uh, on all three of them Scorching Ray. Okay. In left to right order. And miss These are all. The two hits. Uh, you got one hit on the left one. No, I'm sorry, the far right one. Okay. 12 hits. Far right hit for 10 fire damage. No, now all of them have fire on them. Now all of them are on fire. So much for those pelts. Uh, it is the one nearest to use turn, and it's going to try to slash at you. Does a 15 hit you? The 15 is going to do it. 15 is going to do it. Uh, that does 7 slashing and 3 cold. Billy, right. Harp Billy and Harpel is up. What is she going to do? She's got uh, one hit point left. <laughs> Let's see here. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, she grabs the Yeti and is going to cast maybe the strongest spell that she's got. Um, read the spell here. Necromantic energy washes over a creature of your choice. You can see within range, draining moisture and vitality from it. The yeti that's next to her that just nearly killed her makes a constitution saving throw. 16, 16 pass. So, okay. It's going to do... Eight. That's 8d8. 49. Wow. But it's only going to take half of that because a... Uh, because that is a pass. That takes uh, 25. The Yeti looks terrible. It sort of collapses down, and the two of them are sort of breathing heavily on the snow as it sort of is uh, has nearly most of the life sucked out of it, but uh, it's still kicking. Harkus, you're up. The one next to Valian is clearly the worst looking of them all. Um, I'm going to move up here next to Cadillac. And I'm going to take some swings at this one here because I can see that Cadillac is not having a good day. The 17 hit. 17 hits. hits for 10 bludgeoning all right harkus you've collected another pelt as you take that sucker down <laughs> um and then can i run over here yep and take my flurry of blows on this one 
Uh, no, it is when you hit a creature with a melee attack, you may spend expend a key point, right? Uh, for flurry of blows. It says it just says after you attack, after you take the attack, you can spend one key point to make two unarmed strikes as a bonus action. Oh, okay. Well then, yeah. All right. Then yes, you can. All right. Describe to me how you punch a yeti to death. <laughs> Doesn't even matter because you hit. So like you run over there and just like smack another one Mike Tyson style and bring him down. How many has he single handedly killed? Four and dealt the f <laughs> Four of the seven. Four of the seven. <laughs> well, I'm just gonna sit back and let you take care of the last the one seven. then. If if Jeff would let me, I would go and use the other blow on this one. But <laughs> I still I, have one I, left. I like Do you have the movement to get there? Oh my god. Uh, how far was that one? What was that? Uh, was I don't know. Just roll, man. You don't have to walk. Just roll. Uh, 15 feet? Yeah, I've got 45 feet of movement. Dude, we can punch him in the face, man. All right. I need my get, action yeah, to you take can get a there. healing potion. Sweet. <laughs> that hits. That doesn't kill him, though. <laughs> But you punch another Yeti in the face. You're just like a Yeti punching machine. You just go from one to the next, smacking them. All right, one hit point Ordella is up. Poor Yatara. I am so sorry, Jonathan. This has just been like the worst game. He's just having fun watching. I'm sorry, dude. It's terrible. I does, uh, um, does drinking a healing potion count as... It's an action. Okay, well then I will use my action. For that. It's a healing potion. Yeah. Yatara, right. I think we're going to say that it has been a minute has passed and you are unparalyzed because That's this has gone on at D4. least. This has gone on about 10 rounds. So uh, you're unparalyzed, Yatara. As the stare has worn off, you regain your uh, regain your druthers. What do you do? So at this point, um, move just a little bit. Five. To the east. Like around here ish. Um, at this point, I'm really pissed off, so I'm going to cast Fireball in the last one that's standing. <laughs> uh, you're going to cast Fireball? Yes. Is in. A... Okay. No! All right. No. I need uh, Harkus, Leonard, and a Yeti to make dexterity saving. Right? I'm just kidding. Harkus, <laughs> you almost made it through. Actually, 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 you could do this. You actually could cast Fireball. You just need to target it. Um, you need to target it like here. No, What's I'm the actually, radius on it? No, I'm not going to be that stupid. I'm just going to cast Magic Missile on it. From where I am. I mean, you really could. Um, all right, Magic Missile it. Oh, it would be uh, oh, Jesus Christ. Thirteen. All right, so you nail it for thirteen. Uh, it looks pretty terrible after you hit it. Uh, it's been smacked pretty hard. Okay. Uh, Zarya, you're up. How bad is it? That's pretty bad. I'm going to save spell slots. Um, I'm just going to toll the dead on it. May I get a wisdom saving throw, please? Okay. Fail. Yeah, no. All 
right. It's 11. Cadillac, you're up. Okay. Um, I am going to um, step around here and then um, I should still have uh, Sunbeam available, or do I? What is your uh, ruling you, on that? I'm just I'm just going to turn around and look at, at Cadillac and go, I've got this. Take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> Sunbeam Sunbeam went out when you uh when you dropped unconscious. Okay. Okay. Um okay, then I It's a concentration spell and when you drop dead you lose concentration. Um okay. So I am going to um step back here and I am going to attack with my lance since it has reach. Okay. Plus a d4. Um, plus d4? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and attack number one. Okay, with attack number one, what do you say as you strike at it? Um, let's see. From Kudzu's heart, I stabbeth thee. <laughs> <laughs> and then the Yeti falls over dead and no longer moving in the snow. As uh, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start harvesting pill. <laughs> Waste no time. I um I collapse in the snow and just look at Ordell and gasp, Castle Jacuzzi, please. <laughs> you look upwards and can see the barren environs surrounding you with a uh, the skull shaped edifice uh, in the distance in the mountains. Cadillac screams, Jacuzzi, please. That was like a fist fight in a telephone booth. It was a tense. Kind of. This is basically where you are. You're kind of on this mountain path heading upwards towards this uh, skull crowned with the stone skull crowned with thorns. I mean, I vote for arrest. We have a vote for arrest to try yes. to launch, to launch a uh, fortress, and try yes. to take a rest. Okay. Second. Yeah, I think that sounds reasonable. Okay. okay. I'm throw my fortress out then. Ordella, you say the magic words and toss out the fortress. It's got some cracks in the walls, and it's taken a little bit of damage where you threw it on top of another abominable Wicked yeti. Wicked Witch. Totally you threw it on a different abominable yeti. You know, another yeti. Totally worth it. Where you Wicked Witched it once before. It took a little bit of damage, but it's holding t intact together. And, uh, yeah, you have a small fortress perched on the side of this mountain next to this... Uh, Skull Fortress. And you all go in. I I keep waiting for like He Man to come running out. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Skeletor. Skeletor. <laughs> Power of Gray Skull. It kind of does look gray skullish, doesn't it? It does. Yes, it does. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That was my first thought, too. Okay. You guys, um... Well? I'll take a watch. You're in the edifice and taking a watch, I assume. Guitaro, you take the first watch. I'll take the second. Yeah, I'll also take a watch. I didn't take all that much damage. I took no damage. Well, of course you did. Um, and I'm, okay. as I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be cleaning all of the pelts and looking side-eyed at everyone who tried to damage <laughs> as they were attached <laughs> to the edge. Uh, okay, who's got first? The first watch. I got first. 
Um, it is colder than beyond uh, measure, even inside your edifice. Um, now, I know that the spell says that it keeps out the cold and everything, but where you are, it just seems to seep in, and it seeps into your bones. And I need everybody that's here, even in this uh, stone fortress, to make me a constitution save, please. Oh, there it is. Oh, hold on. Sorry. Jeff, if I add a D3 to my nine, will it make a difference? Maybe. Maybe. It really might. I'll do that. Uh, I'm going to... Oh, advanced roller. No, I can't roll a D3. I'm going to roll a D6 and divide by two. That works. Okay. So that's, that's a good a roll. Uh, yeah, all of you pass, which is a good thing. A very good thing. Okay. Uh, first watch passes without incident. Who has second watch? I've got second. Second watch also passes without incident. Who's got third watch? I had third. Okay. Third watch. Very lucky. It does well. Fourth watch. I'll take a watch. Okay. Good luck. Uh, no other incidents. So, despite the horrific environs that you're in, uh, you don't have any major uh, incidences while you're here. Uh, eight hours have passed. Everybody has been able to take a long rest. Yay. That was just what the doctor ordered. A good night's sleep in the jacuzzi. The next uh, day, so to speak, has arrived. And uh, what do you all do? Dorm the castle? No, we're in the castle. Uh, you're, you're not at the... We, we use the fortress to storm the fortress. Oh, I see. Well, you taking the fortress down and continuing up the mountain? <laughs> Unless we put wheels on it. I suppose. Yep. Okay. Uh, you uh, start trudging upwards through the snow and ice higher and higher, and it's almost colder and colder as you get up to the top. Eventually, uh, as you approach, the steps end in front of a double door made of uh, slabs of ice inside of the skull's mouth. There are dragon skull skulls and bones embedded in the door. And carved into uh, the lintel is a uh, single word in dwarvish script. Uh, anybody speak? I assume you speak Dwarvish Cadillac? Yeah. Yes, I do. Fluently. I hope so. Uh, the uh, Dwarvish word above these double doors with dragon skulls and bones says uh, Grim, uh, Grim Scale. Interesting. Tell us that. 
Uh, yes, I shared that with the rest of the party. Can I determine anything else about the construction of the doors or this yeah. edifice in general? Sure, roll Kister, take advantage. Stone okay. cutting. Um, you said that was history? Hmm? That was a good roll. Seven. Yeah, you have advantage. You can trap better if you want to. Oh, um... Well, there you go. I'm going to take you there to where you are, actually. And as you sort of went down this cave to this stone door, so give me just one moment. Let me change the screen so you can see where you're at. Yeah, as he tells us that it's Grim Scale, do I recognize that being from this area? Do I recognize no. the name? Okay. No. Uh, Cadillac, like what you can tell is that this is definitely the construction of Frost Giants. And Grim's scale would have been maybe like maybe like the name of the keep of one of the Jarls or something like that. Long ago. This is very old. You can tell that this is old. But it's been repurposed seemingly. Um, Interesting. Which would make sense with the um, other constructions we've seen on the island. That this was Frost Giant. Yeah. A Frost Giant Enclave. Yeah. The uh, so. door is 20, like, 25 feet high and, like, 8 feet wide. And, uh, it's thick and solid. Held in with pins made out of ice. So... What can we tell about the rest of the skull edifice? Is it, are there windows? Are there actual open apertures around the front? Uh, uh no, nothing like that. Okay. Um, um it's, uh, Nothing like that to speak of. Uh, the doors appear sort of frosted and frozen over, as best you can tell. No windows. Uh, but it, it's like uh, the whole skull appears to be sort of a natural feature that's been carved into this shape. Probably by giants rather than like some giant dragon that they made it out of or something. It's like a sphinx. You know, they carve the mountain into this. Are the uh, gates themselves actually ice, or are they just iced over? Uh, they are made out of stone, and they have pins made out of ice. That are securing them? Mm -hmm. There's ice covering over them. I'm not sure if this is a good idea, but I would be happy to try my um, hoof melting technique on this gate um, if nobody else has any ideas that they would like to try first. Actually, no, uh, it is a, the door is a thick slab of ice. Chiseled ice with crude handles. Actually, okay, this is different because the... Uh, Double door made of slabs of ice with dragon skulls and bones embedded in. So it's made of is actual door is not stone. It is made of ice and it has ice pins, and it has dragon skulls and bones embedded in the ice. But yeah, pins made out of ice. So you could definitely try to melt the pins. Yeah, Jeff, to, to assist Cadillac with the melting, I'm going to bring my flamethrower bot. Okay, flamethrower. Uh, yeah, you're able to just do that. The, the two of you doing those things, you're able to. Uh, the doors sort of, these doors sort of collapse and fall off of their hinges, and uh, open it is. You can see into a uh, hallway heading inwards. Um, since the flamethrower bot came out, um. Is there a ruling on whether I actually had to expend my sunbeam or not? 
Uh, you can just use flamethrower bot. Okay. You have the flamethrower out now. You only get one sunbeam per day. Correct. So, yeah. yeah, so flamethrower bot could do that. I'd like to reserve my sunbeam. Yeah, you don't have to use that. Okay. Because I'm assuming a day passed in the... Or, We're going to wrap it up. We're gonna wrap it up here in just a minute, um, but what do you guys do? Um, I, I don't want to be the one to say I'm going to go through the door, but I want to go through the door. <laughs> so I guess I shall, but I okay. am, because it's a hallway that I had to melt my way into, I am going to be looking for traps or weirdness or dragons. Yes, yeah, sure. Or uh, invisible kobolds. Uh, Billion is with you, and... Uh... She's got her little cobalts with her. Um, there are no cobalts, and they seem sort of nervous. But uh, she sends one of them sort of in with you, kind of looking around. And uh, at least on initial glance, you uh, you don't see any uh, obvious traps or anything like that. Um, All right, Leonard is watching. If you're investigating more corners. closely, if you're investigating more closely, you can roll uh, like perception to see if you just sort of perceive anything, or if you're like feeling the ground for plates or something. Investigation. Yeah, I'm, I'm watching closely. I'll take a perception roll as I move along. Okay. Uh, you don't detect anything. Uh, you All notice right. another set of, st of ice doors in front of you, directly in front of you, and then a hallway that's leading off north, please. Are they frozen shut? Uh, they are also same with ice hinges and ice pins. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to regret this, is what I'm going to do. Uh, but I'm going to, while I still have the flamethrower bot, uh, destroy this door and destroy okay. this door. Okay. So and as destroy you do this, this you, door. All right. So as you do this, Leonard, the, let's do one at a time here. The first door falls open. And inside there, there is a long rectangular room strewn with pieces of rotting wood and rusted metal, the remnants of giant weapons and weapon racks. Rusted out, a rusted out helmet size, sized for a giant lies near the back wall. There doesn't appear to be anything salvageable in this room. It looks like some sort of guard room or armory. And you move on to the next door. You and your flamethrower bot go over to the door here. Uh-huh. You can move your character and everything over there. Oh, yeah. I'll move my character in front of the door okay. and the flamethrower bot in front of the door. Are other people following him in there? What is everybody else doing as Leonard's doing this? I would follow. I'll follow. Okay. Um, I did not make it onto the map, just FYI. Okay, let me put Cadillac on there. I don't know why you are on there, uh, Cadillac. You should be on there. This is me having too many things going on at once. Um, Cadillac, uh, Leonard, as you open this door, um, the door swings open from hinges. Inside there, there is what appears to be a withered old frost giant. He is ancient appearing. He is leaning upon a, heavily upon a great axe that sits in front of a tall door in the far wall. Uh, the giant wooden stool upon which he sits creaks under his weight, and he stares at you with cloudy eyes. And as you enter the room or open it up, uh, he grips his weapon tightly, stumbles to his feet. And do any of you speak giant? Leonard, do you speak giant? Hang on, most of my characters I speak, speak giant. giant, but not this one. I Zarya, you you hear him say in giant Death we meet at last And that is where we will end it for the evening. No.
that was a little too I love exciting. That guy. <laughs> I think death tried to meet a lot of us this yeah. night. Yeah. Yeah. You guys did great. You handled the Yetis better than expected. I thought you might be toasted there and that we would have oh, to... Oh, so did we. But so here we we. are in the fortress of Grimscale, where you have met an ancient Yeti. Looks very much... You know that scene in Indiana Jones and The, and the Last Crusade where they meet the knight inside of the basement? And mm -hmm. he's got the... It, it looks something like something, something like that. Mm. Any any dang way. Um, thanks for playing, everybody. It was we look a lot forward, of fun. We look forward to next week when uh, who knows what's going to happen. And who knows what's going to happen. Love it. And who gets to die next week? <laughs> hey, you got listen. I made sure to tell you all to, when we started this to like have backup characters ready, and y'all have done swimmingly. That is true. Y'all have done swimmingly better than I ever expected you would do through this campaign. It has gone better than you could possibly imagine. But now you're in a really bad place. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> That's okay. See you guys. Donatella is ready to roll. <laughs> you guys, Donatella's got to come and avenge Leonor. He's he going to be like a, a monk with a staff and everything. So I need another backup character. Like yes. That. Yes. I need, to, right. I need to get on mine because okay. I'm really pushing it. Oh, my goodness. And and if we're really lucky, you'll get to meet uh, Cadillac's uh, cousin, Pontiac. Ah! <laughs> See, I was going to say Dodge. <laughs> Uh, His nephew you know, Camaro. <laughs> Dodge, he could be a good rogue. I, I like yeah. the legend of oh, Cadillac like him, yeah. and uh, Cadillac and Moira. Yeah. Um. Uh, all right, y'all. We'll see you guys next week. Okay. Later, y'all. Good night.